John D'Souza spent 25 years as a special agent with the FBI, where he specialized in counterterrorism and paranormal cases. He's written a number of books, one of which is called The Extra Dimensionals, and he's made a number of startling predictions in his book, which seem to be coming true with real-life events that are occurring today. And probably the most significant is his prediction that we are going to be facing a false flag alien event involving motherships hovering over major cities in the United States and around the world. You are listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala, your source for the uncensored truth regarding the human, extraterrestrial, global, and political agenda. Click the like button and subscribe to this channel. And now, here is Dr. Michael Sala. Welcome, John, to Exopolitics Today. Great, Michael. Thank you so much for having me here. I am so excited to be on your show. Uh, again, uh, I have been on Exopolitics before, but this is very special time to actually be on here with you and your particular audience who are just brilliant and they're a little more scientifically minded than the general audiences that I've come across. So that's really exciting for me too. So thank you so much for having me here. Well, you're welcome, John. It's uh, great to have you back. And I know you've been doing quite a lot of research on uh, a lot of these anomalous uh, phenomena for, you know, during your FBI career and in the writing of your books. And I guess, you know, one, one question just for my audience, you know, how much of the actual case material that you've encountered goes into the books and into the kind of predictions in your books? You know, it's funny. That's a that's an ex, that's an excellent question. A lot of the stuff I have come across in cases actually uh, gets into the books, uh, even if it's not um, explicitly named. Because there's a lot of ways to reveal information that doesn't violate any sort of uh, uh, confidentiality requirements or any sort of uh, NDA agreements that they make us sign sometimes uh, from the intelligence community. And um, you can always um, talk about things if you don't use specifics and if you don't, uh, if you don't uh, get into the uh, details and identifiers of the situation. Uh, so the answer is, I would say, I would say about like 80% of everything that I do um, actually goes into my books and my presentations as well. Uh, because unfortunately, uh, we live in a time when the bad guys have revealed so much about what's going on because they want people to know that they can do these things uh, without anyone being able to stop them and without anyone being able to do anything about it. Uh, and so they reveal these things all the time all the time and it's very uh it's supposed to be very uh daunting for us to uh see when they do these so that's why a lot of the stuff is really is really revealed uh openly and um people just people for the most part they just don't care because it's in these areas especially areas of the paranormal areas of the uh exopolitics as well and uh they don't they don't really see uh, the, the subject matters of exopolitics as being threatening to them personally. That's why this, this stuff is revealed all the time. So I, I know you were at the, um, at the FBI uh, sometime in the 1980s up until I think the start of the Obama administration and, and you left because you felt that um, the wrong people were now in charge of the FBI <laughs> and I guess you wanted, you, you wanted to leave at a time when uh, you you were proud of uh, your service, and and before the things got bad, and I think you yeah. you were very wise to have uh, done that because uh, certainly the FBI today is not regarded well by many in the patriot community because it's been weaponized by exactly. all of these uh, deep state actors and you know, exactly. Obama and more recently uh, Biden. Exactly, and um, right now the uh, and I tell this. Uh, because I always have contact with people in the intelligence community and particularly the FBI and many other segments as well. And uh, I tell them, I tell them now all the time, uh, the, the FBI is going to be dispersed. It's going to be dispersed. Uh, it's going to be, 
uh, erased. And they uh, sometimes uh, people in the FBI, they laugh at me when I say that. Because, and the reason is why? It's because they don't know history. They do not know history. We actually, um, the FBI has been uh, in charge of federal law enforcement since 1908, since 1908. And what most people don't know is that before 1908, from 1860 to about, to about 1905, uh, there was an organization that was in charge of federal law enforcement. It wasn't the U.S. Marshals. It was actually the Pinkerton Detective Agency. They were a private contractor group that was solicited and contracted by the Department of Justice at the time and to uh, be basically in charge of uh, federal law enforcement. And that started in 1860 with uh, President Lincoln. Uh, and uh, they were... They had thousands and thousands of members, the Pinkerton Detective Agency. And they actually went to, uh, as a private contractor, to be in charge of federal law enforcement across the country and then also to other countries as well. They were a global group. And they were a phenomenal, phenomenal group. Uh, there was There's many writings about them uh, saying how how impressive they were. They all had these wonderful plaid suits uh, with these smart bowlers and their, and their suits were filled with bulges from the latest weapons of the time, which were very advanced weapons. And uh, they also, and they were just considered very skillful. Also they had uh, in, the 18, in the 1800s, they actually had women and minorities that were we can talk about way ahead of their time, uh, who were members. They were Pinkerton men, and they were called Pinkerton men. And they were actually, and it was an amazing, amazing group. And what happened to them is should have been a, a warning to the FBI, because uh, then in 1900, at the turn of the century, after they had had a tremendously successful run being in charge of federal law enforcement throughout the, throughout the United States, um, they actually uh, became involved with corruption, where the robber, the uh, robber barons of the of the country, uh, J.P. Morgan, Harriman, and others, basically brought them under their control to do their bidding. And even though they were supposed to be private contractors working for the federal, the United States federal government, and what ultimately happened was. They became involved in um, the greatest threat uh, the country saw at that time, which was socialism and unionism and unions uh, forming. And uh, so they became involved in some major, major, at the time, the greatest violent acts uh, at the time, uh, which were strike breaking, strike breaking, union workers. Uh, it both and in uh, New York City and in Pennsylvania, they became involved in some major, major riots where they killed, they actually killed many uh, workers, many union workers uh, in, those, in those cities because this was the greatest threat to the industrialists at the time. And uh, it became a huge, huge scandal. And many uh, Pinkerton men were also killed in those in those actions. And as a result of that, uh, the Congress, the United States Congress, uh, just decided, you know what, the Pinkertons are too corrupt. Uh, they are too involved with, um, with corruption. And these are, these are many, many killings that they've been involved in. And uh, they passed the Anti-Pinkerton Act, which basically removed them from federal law enforcement at the time. And then, and that was around 1905, 1905. And then shortly after that, uh, a young uh, clerk uh, named J. Edgar Hoover uh, in the uh, Department of Justice, or what was the Department of Justice at that time, he basically saw all, he never invented anything. He basically saw everything the Pinkertons did that made them great. And he basically copied it for this new organization in 1908 that he proposed uh, called the FBI. And uh, he basically did everything that they did. And he copied it and created the FBI at that time. And that's how the FBI took over federal law enforcement in 1908. And it's happened and it's, going, it's happening again right now.
that's why the FBI is going to be erased at this point as well, just like the Pinkertons were from federal law enforcement at that time. Well, you know, I was really interested uh, in uh, uh, Robert or Bobby Kennedy Jr. Uh, declaring his candidacy. And, and mm. during his uh, speech, he actually referred uh, to the CIA. He, he, he talked about how his uh, uncle, uh, President Kennedy, uh, was so angry at the FBI and the military when they railroaded him into giving the OK for the Bay of Pigs. Um, invasion that that just went awry um, and just got his administration off to such a poor start that he, that he said, you know, that he wants to smash the CIA into a thousand pieces. <laughs> yeah. So it seems that the FBI and the CIA have uh, you know this kind of track record of of you know arousing the enmity of of presidents or the American people for for being weaponized or lying or or just corruption. Yeah, who has done. Who has done more against the American people than the CIA? They should have been abolished long ago. And they're just, it's just ridiculous that they still exist at this point. And not only exist, but are given the support of the United States government. It's, 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 it's pretty much insane at this point. Anybody who wants to look up Operation Northwoods, Operation Northwoods, that tells you everything. Uh, that you want to know about the CIA, how they were willing to, to kill, willing, ready, and able to kill American citizens, American college students, and that they would propose this, this plan to kill numerous American college students in airplanes and then blame it on the Cubans because they were supposed to get, get the Cubans at that time. And, uh, and just this massive plan to kill so many American citizens that uh, it was that incident that uh, influenced JFK towards his uh, his a thousand pieces uh, speech, where he just fired everybody involved with Operation Northwoods, and then he said, "I'm going to break the CIA into a thousand pieces." And for those who are, and as a as a little aside, I am actually in a, a movie called A Thousand Pieces, where we discuss all of this. And we discuss the line of corruption that has gone from that moment during Operation Northwoods right up until the present time, where uh, we see it all being fulfilled right now, the maximum corruption that is possible by these three-letter agencies, uh, CIA, FBI, and many, many others that is that are really working against the American people. And now it's time for these uh, these agencies to be completely dispersed, erased, and uh, broken into a thousand pieces as well. Yes, I think uh, justice definitely is due, or, or karma is uh, is running up, is going to play its role with uh, these agencies. And so, I want to take this um, interview now into the area of exopolitics, and I know. Well, in the 1990s, there was a French-Canadian by the name of Serge Monast who wrote a book called Project Bluebeam, and, it's, and he talked about its different steps. And uh, at that time, of course, you were serving in the, in the FBI. Now, uh, Serge Monast, after he wrote that book, I think it came out in 1995, uh, he wrote that book and I uh, believe it was a year later, so 1996, he was only in his 40s. Uh, he dies from a heart attack. So uh, uh, the obvious question uh, yeah, that right. I think a lot of people have is, well, was this, an, was this a natural thing or was it um, instituted by the agency? And we know that the CIA does have these heart attack-inducing weapons. I mean, that, that was admitted yeah. in the church uh, committee hearings in, uh, in 1976 or 77. So was Search Monast taken out, and was and what was it about Project Bluebeam that was so kind of explosive that uh, one of the agencies, likely the CIA, would want to take out this French Canadian investigative journalist? Yeah, whenever you have bad actors involved in their in their interests in something that is going on, like uh, the uh, book that was written by Serge Monast, then. You always, you should always assume that they had something to do with it until it's proven otherwise. 
because their interest in this is just too heavy. It's too heavy and thick to uh, ignore. And uh, yeah, they, uh, although it looks like since that time, it looks like there's a lot of government documents that have actually admitted the uh, work on Project Bluebeam. I mean, I've heard about many uh, documents uh, from the government that actually talk about it and reveal a lot about Project Bluebeam. I uh, read a thick folder the other day about Project Bluebeam and how important it was for uh, the government governments to be able to use this as a method of population control, I guess. And uh, it's it's really astonishing stuff. Um, and it's one of the reasons why uh, people believe that uh, that everything is just either it's holograms or it's real. And uh, one of the things that is that people don't uh, understand is that Project Bluebeam is going to be used uh, not as a not as a replacement for real actions. It's going to be used the way that Hollywood uses uh, CGI, and it's possible there's going to be involvement from Hollywood in this um, in this uh, as well, um, where they're going to be using holograms in order to do what Hollywood calls sweetening of of uh, these false flags. And so, in other words, uh, they can actually have when we have, um, for instance, fake alien invasion, where we will have the uh, cabal send all of these tic tacs uh, against a uh, city, against a, one of our major cities to actually destroy it and to make it um, basically uh, to wreak havoc upon one of our cities. Um, well, they're going to do that, but then they can use Project Blue Beam methods to make, uh, to make these real 10 or 20 tic tacs appear to be a thousand tic tacs in the, in the sky. And that's what they can do in order to ratchet up the terror factor. Because when you see 10 or 20 of these things, and they're real, they're very much real, um, they can come and wreak some havoc. But when you see a thousand of them behind them, uh, it actually it sends up the fear level so much, so much higher. So that's what I really think the uh, role of Project Bluebeam is going to be in these in these projects when they come forward and it's going to be it's going to be really something like for instance people can see in uh, movies uh in movies what they'll do is they'll do a they'll do a physical effect where you have 10 soldiers in the front row but then they'll use uh cgi or something like project blue beam to uh, create you know ten thousand soldiers behind them behind them but the first row of soldiers can still can still kill you for real they can do that. Um, and so that's what we have to, that's why people, you know, when they hear Project Blue Beam, they tend to think, you know, oh, then that means it's just going to be a bunch of, of pretty uh, holograms uh, and it won't be able to affect us. And that's not true at all. That's not how they're going to be using it. They're going to be using it as an addendum, as a sweetener to uh, situations that are deadly, absolutely deadly. So that's one of the things I want people to uh to realize and to know because sometimes um sometimes people uh relate about this uh about fake alien invasion and they uh and they screw it all up i mean they uh screw it all up by telling people that uh when it happens when false flag when false alien invasion fake alien invasion happens it's just going to be a bunch of holograms it'll be you know so you don't really have that much to fear, but no, that is not the case at all. So that's why that's what people need to know, basically, about Project Bluebeam, how important that is. Yeah, it's a very important distinction that you, you make there. That this is this is technology that's going to augment uh, something that is very real. That there will be uh, craft and soldiers or aliens or programmed life forms, whatever you want to talk whatever you want to phrase it, that are going to be part of some initial wave, but then that's all going to be augmented, as you say, to, to right. make it make it look like it was it's a vast amata as, as opposed to just a small right. small grouping of, of, of real ships that, that right. are involved. Now, I, one of the things that um, I think distinguish Serge Monast's work on Project Blue Beam and the kind of 
material you get coming from Carol Rosen and from uh, Stephen Greer. You know, Greer and Rosen, they always talk about the, you know, the, the contrived or the fake alien invasion, saying, oh, you know, they're, they're going to kind of try and pull that off and, and, and trick us that way. But Monast, he said that that was actually just one early stage of Project Bluebeam, that the more advanced stage would actually not be an invasion but would be a salvation, mm -hmm. that you would have like this Christ or Buddha yes. or a Muhammad-type figure suddenly being projected in the sky and making people believe that uh, they had been saved. So, you know, you, you so it's like the, the classic, uh, you know, um, Hegelian dialectic, you know, the, the thesis, the antithesis and the solution. It's just like you have right. your contrived invasion and then you have like some kind of contrived salvation event and then you have this new world order where people are worshipping around th these new alien saviors. So, yeah, do you want right. to maybe um, yes. take that up? Yes, and I was just about to mention that. That's, the, that's actually the more, I mean, I don't want to say more important, but yeah, the more significant part of Project Bluebeam is that um, all the government papers I have seen, all the documents I've seen, have always started with this religious project that's going to be coming out of Project Bluebeam, which is they're going to have, they're going to have Christ and Buddha, they're going to be making uh, Christ and Buddha and all the others uh, appear in the sky and start talking to people and start talking to people because they also have voice to skull technology, as we all know, and they will be able to recreate uh, the voices actually speaking to basically every human being on earth if they want to. And, and that's how they're gonna be able to do this. And however, what I can see is that it's not, again, like the other aspect that we talked about, it's not gonna be a standalone project. It's not gonna be uh, just Christ saying, it's going to be in connection to something else. It's going to be a sweetener. In other words, it'll be Christ or Buddha or whatever other religious figure actually telling you to do something in conjunction with what? With the alien overlords. You know, hey, you should listen to the alien overlords. You should do what they say. You should, uh, because they're working with me. That, that sort of thing is what's going to be said. It's, it's, not, just, it's not just going to be, it's not just going to be, hey, uh, here is uh, Christ in the sky, and um, you know, and I'm telling you, you know, you have to believe in me and just do what uh, what I would want you to do. It's it's not going to be like that. It's going to be in conjunction with something else that the cabal wants accomplished, so that uh, so that the appearance of Christ, the appearance of Buddha, will be a sweetener that actually leads people to something else. To, to listen to the alien overlords, to do what the cabal leaders want them to do. Uh, that's what it's gonna be connected with. And that's why that whole the religious project has to be a sweetener for something else as well. Otherwise it doesn't, it doesn't accomplish the goals of the cabal uh, type figures that want, that want this stuff done. Now, I know you've written about this in uh, or one or several of your books, um, uh, maybe you can tell us. Uh, <clears throat> maybe, maybe you can tell us when you first uh, started to write about uh, the the fake alien invasion. Yeah, well, I mean, the the primary uh, the primary reason dimensionals has become has become again has become incredibly popular has gone to number one on all the lists, all the Amazon lists again. After, after so many years, and why I am being pursued by mainstream media to do things with them um, uh, all the time is because, of, is because of this. It's because the, the major prophecy that is coming true right now, we see it coming true, is that the world at large wants us to believe that alien visitors are physical, that they're physical just like us. UFOs are physical, just like us, and that they can appear. They can appear on tele. Uh, they can appear here and just on the White House lawn, and they can just stay there. Roswell. That Roswell was absolutely true. That we just had some sort of uh, alien vehicle that just crashed. That just crashed 
uh, by the road and just, you know, stayed there dumped on by the side of the road like a, like a human vehicle would. Uh, and, and that's one of the main things that, um, that I disprove in the alien, in the extra dimensionals. Um, alien visitors are not physical. They are not physical. They are not like us. Their craft are not physical like us either. I mean, the main thing I prove in uh, extra dimensionals, um, I started in the FBI and the first thing they did was hand me a document, a, a document that was from an FBI agent. And it was what we call the smoking gun. It was just a document from an FBI agent. It's available to everybody. This document's available to everyone on the uh, database of declassified FBI documents because it's so old. It's from 1947. It's uh, because of the age. It can be declassified and put at FBI, I'm sorry, vault.fbi.gov. Just go to that site. You go there. You press the button that says um, uh, extra extraordinary uh, cases. Uh, it says something very similar to that. And then you press that button. It opens up UFO cases, uh, uh, animal mutilation cases, extrasensory perception cases. You can open up all those documents and uh, you can download them for free. You can download them for free. And including, including you can go to UFO Group 1, UFO Documents Group 1. Open that up. Go to page 22. And if you go down page 22, you go to this document. I'm trying to see with the light how I can show it. It's a one-page document. Uh, it is displayed in my book, The F Extra Dimensionals. And it is just a one-page document. It's a report from an FBI agent who happens to be also a scientist at the time. And he was he wrote a one he wrote a little one page report to all scientists of the time in 1947, uh, the same time that the Roswell operation was pushed forward, and um, it was basically a report from his informant. He said his informant was supernormal, uh, which is an old timey word for paranormal for um, extra extra normal, and. Uh, it makes it, from context, it makes it look like his informant was an alien visitor as well. And his alien visitor friend gave him several conclusions that he put in this report that I was showing right here. In this report, he uh, gave eight conclusions that he was told and that he needed to tell the world. And he said, the scientists probably won't believe me because of who they are, because of who my informant is, but I still have to tell you because I have to try. And he says, uh, first of all, he says, uh, alien visitors are not physical. UFOs are not physical. They are from another level of reality, another, uh, he uses the term locas, another locas, level uh, dimension of reality. And they can actually come to our level of physicality and appear physical for short periods of time. He says uh, UFOs uh, do not have any one inside of them. He says they are they are actually a sort of independent uh, life that actually exists and comes with alien visitors to carry out tasks for them, and that they are, are not made of metal. They real UFOs are actually made of some kind of plasma type shifting material that can actually convert from whatever, from metallic appearing to light, to light um, plasmas. And he says that's that's what they are. And he says that this stuff about Roswell, <laughs> about a ship crashing at Roswell, and uh, that was done for other purposes. It was not, it was not a real thing that happened. So this ever since then, I have been uh, accumulating evidence uh, for people that Real UFOs, not, not UAPs. <laughs> UAPs are completely man-made. They are man-made. Um, but real UFOs, uh, they are not physical. They, uh, they can appear to be physical for short periods of time, um, but they cannot remain physical, let's put it that way. So if, they, if, they were, if it were possible to crash them, it's not. You can't shoot them down either. You can't. 
Uh, and when you have governments telling you, uh, telling you, as has happened in the United States, happened in Russia, I believe happened in China also, um, you have these governments telling, oh, we just shot down a UFO. Uh, no, they did not. No, they did effing not do that because they weren't real UFOs. They may have been UAPs, um, which that's a whole nother story. And it's not a pretty story either. Um, so that's how that goes, Michael. And that's how that looks. That's, that's very interesting. Uh, that's that's kind of a fascinating um, development on the whole extraterrestrial phenomenon that, you know, rather than talking about physical beings from, from our 3D uh, reality, we, we are talking about these uh, beings from other dimensions who are able to come here, but only for, for brief periods before they go back. So so that is very uh, fascinating. Now, I, I guess you know, the, the question some people might have is, well, does it have to be an either or? Can, can you have um, you know, a, a lot of uh, these extraterrestrials that come from other dimensions, but at the same time have extraterrestrials in our kind of like 3D physical space or universe who, who come here, you know, because they've developed craft, physical craft that use some kind of faster than light technology to get here from, say, Alpha Centauri or Proxima Centauri to our to our solar system and kind of like interact with us. So, so you know, do, does it have to be mutually exclusive, or can you have both things happening? I believe I believe it is uh, mutually exclusive, especially because we have so many uh, people. Uh, pretending that they are that they are developing uh, real UFOs um, that uh, these things are alien visitors uh, and we have these things that are just they're just they're man-made and then the question becomes uh, but if they're man-made in this what does that does that mean they're American they're you know they're Chinese they're Russia oh, what what are they? no they are they are controlled and they are created by a different level of global government that is above the United States, it's above the nations. They're the ones who are creating this sort of stuff. And um, they control it and they are looking, and they are the ones who are looking to eventually use all of this stuff, all of these, these tic tacs, these, these uh, sort of uh, vehicles uh, that they have created and that they have done. Uh, they have very often, I believe, they have used uh, reverse technology from Roswell, uh, which, um, you know, Roswell was, I believe, was done in order to affect technology transfer because it was actually done with uh, help from, uh, from alien visitors, alien visitors. Uh, but it was also, they, they actually uh, used their skills to fake the Roswell craft, uh, the bodies that were found in there as well, these alien hybrids that they created. And they did all of this in order to affect technology transfer that they wanted to do uh, in order to get their agreement that they would be in exchange for technology, they would be getting all of these human bodies um, every year that would be uh, disappeared with no investigation by human authorities whatsoever that's what they wanted that's what they did at roswell and that is um because they themselves uh the malevolent alien visitors are not completely physical either uh they are not completely physical so they have to do uh their workarounds in order to get roswell done which they were very interested in doing um and that's why um yeah i I do not actually believe that there are any um, any uh, uh, alien visitors in our physical space that are real, that are continuing to uh, to be here on a on a permanent sort of basis. Um, I just I just don't believe that's real. The ones that do actually come here, uh, I believe they are extra dimensional. They are coming from other levels of dimensions in order to um, be here to accomplish limited purposes and to do so do these things temporarily that's why they can't just 
leave behind dead bodies, <laughs> leave behind dead bodies here because they're not from here and they're not like us as well. Well, I want to go back to this idea of the alien invasion, the, the contrived threat that is being prepared. And you, you've written about that in your uh, The Extra Dimensionals. And uh, this is something that uh, you've been predicting for some time. And last time we talked, I don't know, we, we, uh, we covered this. So I, I was very interested that very recently you have this uh, paper that was written by uh, Dr. Sean Kirkpatrick, who is the uh, inaugural head of this newly created All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office that was created in the Pentagon to report to Congress on U um, unidentified aerial phenomena or, or UFOs. And uh, he co-wrote a paper with uh, Professor Avi Loeb from Harvard University. And I, I just, just did an interview with him, incidentally. And uh, he, they both talk about motherships releasing probes. And I thought, wow, that's amazing. I mean, here you have the new head of the Arrow office and this leading Harvard astronomer openly talking about UFOs probably coming from an alien mothership. I mean, that's incredible. So, I mean, is, is this, um, you know, is this setting up what you've been describing? Yeah, I believe, I believe it is. I believe that was very carefully uh, put together, uh, that uh, that uh, individual from Harvard was solicited to put his material into this, this report that just went all over the world. Uh, we just had we just had uh, this um, Oumuamua, uh, Oumuamua, uh, the uh, great scout, this uh, great giant cigar-shaped uh, sort of mothership that, uh, I mean, you've reported on it for many years as well. Um, and uh, the, it's a Hawaiian word for scout, for scout. And now they just made the announcement that Aumuamua is coming back. It's coming back uh, to Earth. And they just added, and it's going to be releasing probes. At least they conflated uh, this um, this report from this individual that you just had on the show. And uh, and they conflated all that, and they threw it all, put it all together into a big ball of wax, and they just threw it out there to all over the world. It was picked up by the global wire. The report was picked up by the global wires, uh, by the APN Reuters, and it went all over the world. Now, why? Why at this particular time? Well, let me tell you something else. As Just as an investigator, something that's been going on just before this happened. What's been going on is, you know what? It's been that the United States uh, and Canada and um, where else? Uh, and uh, I believe possibly China as well and Russia, Russia as well, have all been announcing that they've been shooting down UFOs. Now, they haven't shown us the evidence. They haven't, you know, shown us, oh, here's the UFO that we shot down. You know, if it was, I mean, it, logic says that they would be showing pictures. They would be showing, but none of them. They've all been just announcing, you know, yeah, we, we shot down this UFO. We recovered the materials and uh, that's it. We're not going to tell you anything else. Well, what a convenient time for these, uh, for this announcement of the giant mothership coming here and releasing probes. What do you think those probes are going to look like? I, I will take bets that uh, the probes that are going to be released are going to look just like Tic Tacs, just like Tic Tacs, that those silver, sort of silver colored um, uh, vehicles. And sometimes they're oval shaped. Uh, sometimes they're cigar shaped. They're in, they're in all shapes and sizes. But I mean, the only commonality I can really see is that sort of silverish kind of skin that I see on these things. And uh, it's already been said by uh, several very knowledgeable people uh, that uh, these Tic Tacs are actually man-made. They are man-made. Uh, they are created. And we've had, we've had several con U.S. congressmen who have said the same thing, who have said it really looks like these Tic Tacs are... Uh, are man-made. Uh, 
but they appear not to be under the control of the United States or Russia or any nation in particular. And because they're they're going all over the world. Here's something else that's been going on across our country in congressional subcommittees and uh, even Senate subcommittees as well. We've had congressmen receiving classified briefings that don't state classified at all uh, because they they leak out information from these things. <clears throat> and basically, what's been going on is that the the um, the uh, national security structure the uh, has been showing the congressmen all these near misses that have been happening all over the country. Near misses, uh, classified by the FAA as whenever one vehicle comes within, like I think it's like a thousand feet of another vehicle. And so so much so that it really looks like it's being done on purpose for intimidation purposes, uh, where our airliners are out there, our military pilots are out there, and they'll suddenly have a near miss from one of these TikToks. Well, this has been going on all over the country. And it's been going on in other countries too, where these, these tic-tac vehicles of all shapes and sizes have been coming right up to our to our aviation, to our airliners, and coming right up to them and sometimes passing right over them. Uh, just, it looks like an intimidation factor. And all of these congressmen have been receiving these classified briefings, which are not secret. I mean, they're not secret because we're finding out about it. And so this has been going on for a while. At the same time as the United States has been and Russia has been announcing, yeah, we, we shot these things down. Well, these things are going to be coming back now, apparently, uh, the under with the Omwamwa, Omwamwa uh, Scout uh, giant mothership uh, that, is, that is coming back to Earth right now. It's going to be, according to their report, it's which went all over the world, it, they're going to be releasing these probes and... What do you think is going to happen with these probes? I suspect, and I want to tell, I want to tell people, there's a very real possibility that these probes are not going to be probing. They're going to come back, and it's going to be labeled as some kind of revenge for us having shot down all of these UFOs in the very in the very recent time that that's happened. So we are going to be facing uh, these probes. These and I, I, uh, I predict it's going to be Tic Tacs, uh, the same kinds of Tic Tacs we've been seeing. And they're going to be coming back, except they're going to have a bigger destructive capacity than what we've seen in the past. They're not just going to be coming up to our airliners and uh, trying to intimidate. They're going to, be, they're going to be very possibly shooting them down, shooting them down somehow, because they have not yet displayed their destructive capacity. And I think that's what we're facing right now. And I think that's why this announcement was made about the uh, Mwamwa coming back and the uh, probes, probes that they're going to be releasing uh, here on Earth very shortly. Well, I know that they've been uh, discussing these uh, Tic Tac sightings and how they're a national security threat since 2017. That's when the New York Times, Politico, another mainstream newspapers began running stories about these uh, Navy pilot sightings and radar recordings of these uh, tic-tac-shaped craft and also the, this kind of circular craft that, that, you, that you just mentioned that were observing Navy craft or ships or aircraft and interacting with them, going over restricted military facilities. So they've been covering that. Um, in the mainstream media since 2017, you know, and of course it's quite ironic because before that, you know, UFOs were considered and exopolitics was considered tinfoil hat territory. No one would pay attention. Now all of a sudden the New York Times, Politico and the other major newspapers start reporting on these Tic Tac sightings and, and, and that they are based on Navy pilot uh, sightings and recordings and all of a sudden... Tic, uh, UFOs are, are the hot topic, but they, of course, rebranded uh, UAPs, Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. So that's mm -hmm. so that's quite um, uh, you know quite a quite a development. So it looks like they have the deep state has been building up towards something involving 
these probes, these uh, drones or these small objects. And, yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that, that many of these objects uh, are man-made drones um, that they have, are produced in places like, I think it's uh, uh, Plant 21 over there in uh, Palmdale, uh, California, right, right next to... Uh, Van, uh, what is it, Vandenberg Air Force Base? Oh, sorry, Edwards Air Force Base. Yeah, Edwards Air Force Base. They have a uh, Plant 21, and they're manufacturing these uh, these craft out of the Skunk Work facilities, and some of the other major corporations are there. And you know, so, so they've been building these craft for a long time. So now they're deploying them, but in a way that is, as you're saying, uh, that this is clearly a psyop. So. So certainly on the part of, of these drones, or many of the drones, uh, there's a PSYOP that many people can identify with. But, but, the, but the mothership, I mean, is, is that, is that a, a, a real um, extraterrestrial or extra-dimensional craft? Or is this also something that's being produced by the deep state or some major corporations? Well, the um, Om Oumuamua is, has also been subject to rebranding as well because we've known about the Omwamwa for many, many years. And it was never, it was never ca uh, uh, explained to us as an alien mothership until now, until now. Now suddenly there's stories uh, saying that the Omwamwa, uh, the giant cigar shaped uh, meteor, I think it was, or asteroid, it was described as in the past. Uh, now suddenly they're saying, oh, it's very possibly an alien mothership that has probes in it. And that we, those will be really, you know, that thing, this area, you have to approach it like an investigator that is in an area of complete deception. Um, and you have to ask the really hard questions, really hard questions. Like, why was it necessary to, in 2017, as you said, to rebrand this entire area from being about UFOs to now being about UAPs, also, by the way, called UATs, like a T with Tom, like Tom, uh, unknown aerial threats as well. What was the necessity? Why did this entire area have to be taken away from the United States Air Force, where it's always been? Because why? Because it's the United States Air Force, air assets, uh, things that are aerial. And the United States Air Force has always been, and even to the chagrin of the FBI, which has argued against this in the past and said, you know, why do we have the U.S. Air Force? Well, because they're air assets. That's what it's about, aerial. And that's why this, the area of ufology should be with the air for the United States. Air Force, it just makes sense, doesn't it? But no, not anymore it doesn't. Because why? Because they want the uh, cabal, the uh, the uh, powers that be want to rebrand this entire area. They want, so they wanted to take it away from the United States Air Force and put it with the United States Navy. Why? What's the reason why? Well, you know, the United States Navy is in charge of guess what? They're in charge of secrecy and legal matters also. They're in charge of legal matters for the entire military, and they're also in charge of secrecy for the entire, uh, for the entire military of the United States. Um, secrecy also that's included with the, what's their, one of their major secrecy projects? The development of top secret weapons top secret weapons. And that's what they've been doing in this area. They've been helping to develop these top secret drones. Um, I had, we had um, no less, no less a genius than uh, Mike Barra of History Channel, who actually uh, came forward, who has actually worked with many aerospace companies and actually came forward and provided that design that I showed you, Mike, uh, Michael, uh, the design of the A-24 drone that uh, he actually, that he worked on, that looks very similar to the Tic Tacs that we have been seeing. I mean, that, and that's from like, that's like from 20 years ago or more. 
Uh, and yet, if you look at the A24 drone, uh, it looks extremely similar to these Tic Tacs uh, where they actually took away the wings uh, that were on the A24 and they made them foldable back. And it just, it looks just like a Tic Tac. It's, that is a clue. That's a very strong clue about the development of these, uh, these weapons, uh, these top secret weapons that apparently uh, the United States uh, military had some involvement in, but apparently is no longer in control of them for some reason. So that's, that's the sort of thing that we're facing right now. And that's why they did the rebranding of the Omama Scout uh, ship as well. That now is we're being told for sure it's a, it's an alien mothership, and that's what we're looking at. We're in the middle of this psyop. This is this is one of the most massive psyops in American history, and it involves everybody. And it's a slow burn. It's a slow burn. It's been going on for a long time, and it's going to continue to go on for a long time because, as Werner von Braun said, this is going to be their final card. Fake alien invasion is going to be their final card when they have nothing else to play. They have nothing else to work. And there's a lot of moving parts to it. There's a lot, um, including all these uh, congressmen and senators that want to get in on the gravy train. Uh, and how could, there be, how could there be a gravy train with UAPs? How could that be? Well, because it's being pushed forward by the military industrial complex. And they are the ones with the resources that they are now flaunting around. And the military industrial complex, by the way, is not American. It is, it is multinational, it is global. And it, it's, uh, and it is very, very powerful. And they are the ones who are pushing uh, these top secret weapons, these UAPs, and trying to, get, uh, trying to get the fear factor ratcheted upward and upward and upward. And that's a problem right now. That's a problem right now because people are very unimpressed, I think. Regular people are very unimpressed by these uh, Tic Tac videos and these things that look like they're from the 1950s. It's just, it's not very impressive. Uh, they try to make it impressive. So now they're going to have to get into the more destructive part of the operation where the UAPs are actually going to have to bring down some, bring down some aircraft. Uh, it's the only way. It's the only way they can keep pushing up the fear factor, which is what they need. Long range, mm -hmm. that's what they need. Yeah, well, that's uh, certainly something that's uh, very scary because uh, we, we know that uh, the deep state does have control over some of these major corporations that do make uh, these um, <clears throat> advanced aerospace vehicles that have been reverse engineered from from uh, captured extraterrestrial craft like like the Roswell crash, um, I mean, it, it, it sounds like you 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 think that that was something else. But whether it was uh, you know a, a physical extraterrestrial craft or some people even think it's a, a time device, you know, from a from a future human civilization, that there has been some reverse engineering going on that they've built. Uh, some of these um, craft that are operational, uh, that they have been uh, sold and they're being used by the Air Force, by the Navy, um, and now by the Department of the, uh, now by the uh, Space Force, or more correctly, Space Command, because because Space Command is actually in charge of the operation of these uh, craft. But the corporations <clears throat> also have their own craft, as as does the CIA and the um, National Reconnaissance Office. So, you know, when you're looking at the United States, you know, the United States is in, by no means monolithic. I mean, this is the big mistake a lot of people make about uh, the United States and secret space programs. They think, well, you know, the United States has a secret space program. And, well, yes and no. Actually, there are multiple secret space programs. The Navy has one. The Air Force has one. The CIA has one. NASA has one. Um, Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, you know, the, the industrial, uh, big industrial companies, they have their own space program. And ultimately, <clears throat> you know, the, who, the, the, the ones that are going to be the most advanced craft, these, these are going to belong to the corporations that make them. 
and and we don't know what's happening inside these corporations. I mean, they, you know, they are outside of the purview of uh, congressional investigators, even military investigators. going on inside these corporations. So it's very, very possible, as you say, that diversity here. Um, Jazz, show an image of, of those. Um, some of these craft that have been reverse engineered, uh, they can be operationalized uh, secretly and they can be used for all, all sorts of purposes. The Black Knight. Black Knight, uh, there it is. Yeah, that, but that's not the one. Um, go to, yeah, there you go, the TR3B. There we go. So th so there's a, you know, the, the TR3B that's uh, that's been operational since the late 1980s. Um, yeah, the, C the CIA, the Air Force, the Navy, they have their own uh, TR3Bs. Uh, you also have uh, the CIA, the NRO, and the various corporations, uh, Lockheed and uh, Northrop Grumman, you know, with their own fleets that, that are used for, for testing and development purposes. You know, there's another example. Oh, yeah. I mean, um, I think you sent me that one. So, so, yeah. so you tell me about that because I haven't seen that, that one before. You want to that tell is, us about that one? That is one of the, um, the, illust uh, the uh, illustrations that show the uh, A24, I believe it's the A24 uh, top secret drone, uh, which is which was then later uh, developed into into basically the Tic Tac that we have seen that we saw uh, over there um, off the um, off the uh, coast of California in uh, what was it 2004 when the uh, the Nimitz Carrier Group basically just uh, kind of created a nice safe atmosphere for experimentation uh, with those Tic Tacs. And they allowed them to actually go back and forth on there and do different things uh, where they did the final testing on these on those Tic Tacs. And yeah, that's that's what that and the A24 top secret drone uh, was eventually adjusted and configured and and uh, it was actually um, fixed up to um, look just like the Tic Tacs that were being used today and that are being seen all over the world at this time. And that's that's what that is. That came to me from the great Mike Barra, who has other, other illustrations also of other vehicles that look even more similar to, uh, to the uh, modern Tic Tacs that are being used, uh, being used by this psychological operation that's going forward today. Um, I know that there have been um, people who have done some research on these very large dirigibles that have been uh, developed uh, by different companies uh, for the um, deep state or for the for the military industrial complex. And some of these dirigibles can be made to look like motherships. So, and they can and they can float for extended periods of time. Um, I think it was David Wilcock that did that, or, my, or Michael Schratt that did a, a presentation on these uh, dirigibles, showing the the patents and and how these can be suspended for weeks at a time. So that brings me to something you said in the extra extra dimensionals, where you talk about these city-sized UFO motherships just hovering, hovering over cities and just being there for a, a period of time. And um, so, yeah, you want to tell us about that? I mean, where did you get that information from? And what do you think is uh, in store for us with these city-sized motherships that may or may not belong to the deep state that can be uh, deployed as part of this false flag uh, invasion or salvation event? Yeah, the, uh, the uh, big... Um... A power quote from my book, The Extra Dimensionals, is once the black swans arrive, once we awaken to numerous mile-long shadows cast by these ancient ships hanging over our major cities, soundless, motionless, maddening, it will be too late. Um, and, and what I mean by that is it, it'll be too late to educate ourselves. It'll be too late to learn about these areas. It'll be too late. Um, 
uh, because at that point it's good. we're going to be at checkmate. And we see this this scenario has been incredibly uh, pre-programmed and developed by Hollywood, by Hollywood, uh, by movies and television, and uh, they that was their assignment, and they have pre-programmed this into us for so many years, and um, and it will. Uh, it will be happening eventually, and and that's that's exactly why we saw the rebranding of the Almuama of the Almuama Scout, uh, the asteroid that is coming back to Earth again, because uh, it is looking to be one of those great motherships that we're going to be seeing here uh, very very shortly, and um, that is one of the things. Also the uh, the Black Knight, what, is, what has always happened with the Black Knight, where the Black Knight has always been shrouded in mystery, and it's always been appearing over our over our cities and just hanging there, and no no communication, no no uh, no anything uh, from the Black Knight. Uh, it's just it's just there, and it will never give us any information, and uh, that's what they are planning. To do, uh, they are planning to have these um, motherships come and be here, and with no communication. That is maddening. That will it will be maddening for people uh, because they'll say, "Why are they? Why are they just there? Why are they just there?" And they're not saying anything. And um, I believe the reason is because uh, they're not saying anything because uh, I believe they're not in there. They're not in there. There's nobody in there. It's just being used as a way, as part of this Project Blue Beam and other things, uh, to make us uh, believe that uh, they have power over us. That's what I believe. Because we've had we've had many uh, benevolent alien visitors, benevolent UFOs that have that have come here and done good things. They've done good things. Mostly they've uh, come all over the world and shut down nuclear missiles that they knew were going to be used for nefarious purposes. And they've done other similar things as well. And they identify themselves through their actions, through their actions. But when they come here and they just hang there, they just hang there and they don't do anything like the uh, like the Black Knight has done, like the... Um, the Omwamwa, I believe, will be doing very shortly as well. When they, That's just an intimidation factor. That's all it is. It's an intimidation factor to, again, ratchet up the fear on the part of the population. And that's what I think we're facing uh, very shortly. And I think all the history and the history and uh, everything else that has gone into this shows us that this is going to be happening very shortly. That our involvement of positive extraterrestrial groups, because uh, you know, a, a lot of my sources have been describing these fleets of uh, extraterrestrials, uh, benign positive extraterrestrials from the Galactic Federation of Worlds and other organizations that have played a, a role in uh, clearing some of the native races um, out of our yeah. solar system. But ultimately, when it comes to earth politics, when it comes to us kind of getting rid of the deep state, the former minions of some of these negative extraterrestrial groups, it's up to us. It's not the, the Galactic Federation can't do anything. If, if the deep state starts tricking us by using Project Blue Beam technologies or maybe they use these uh, dirigibles that can float in the sky for weeks or months on end, in, in the way that you've described, and and they're manipulating the 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 uh, the, pub, the general public through the mainstream media, you know, getting all you know the CNN and the New York Times and uh, NBC and all of the major networks to say, well, look at these, uh, you know, these uh, visitors, these ships, where are they from? Why are they there? And and they're ratcheting up the fear factor and and lowering our kind of like collective consciousness. I think the galactics look at us and say, well, you know, this they're doing it to themselves. They have to wake up. We we can't intervene. This is, you know, this is the prime directive. I mean, the prime directive is absolutely true as far as I know, that uh, yeah, they, they cannot 
it directly interfere in the normal development of a civilization um, if if there are another if there aren't other extraterrestrial negative extraterrestrials interfering so yeah so what you're describing <clears throat> uh, to me makes makes sense that yeah this could be part of a last ditch desperate uh, power play by the deep state using all its resources and yeah you know, the, the deep state by no means is defeated. I know there are people saying that the deep state's on the verge of collapse, and and you know, and, and I, I certainly think that um, you know they, they're they're running out of a lot of resources. But I mean, you know, since the Biden administration has come in, you know, they've they've been like just raiding the the, the piggy bank, you know, taking out billions and billions to fund all of these deep state operations. So so right now they're you know they're flush with money so they can they could they got a few tricks up up their sleeve that they can still play so this you know what you've described in um you know to me it, it's it's very possible yeah and this is one of their last tricks and you know and people don't people have a hard time with it because it's such a long range project and it's been going on for so long and that, but they're always adding little pieces to it, little pieces to it. Uh, recently, we had a, a, a congressman uh, from Tennessee. I don't, I'm not recalling his name right now, but he's been going on alternative media all over the place and talking about these. Um, uh, it's probably best I don't say his name because he's, I don't want to get called in front of congressional con Congress uh, committees, subcommittees. Um, but he has been talking about how he's been going around to all these subcommittees that are being shown these films of these UAPs uh, supposedly attacking our aviation because a near miss is considered an attack. It's actually considered an attack when it's done on purpose, as it obviously is. And um, he's been uh, doing these, and these are national security briefings because supposedly these UAPs are, are a terrible threat to our national security. But what he also said is that um, he said, uh, this has been, uh, it's been apparent that these, these UAPs are man-made, that they had involvement from our great aerospace companies, uh, you know, McDonnell Douglas, uh, uh, Raytheon, and because he can see their fingerprints on these, these UAPs, uh, which were also possibly reverse engineered uh, from and use anti gravity and you know and possibly re and reverse engineered from uh, Roswell as well, but he said, but it's it's also terribly obvious that they may have input from the Pentagon, uh, but it appears that these things are not under the control of any particular nation, not under the control of the United States, they're not under the control of Russia or China, and because they're they're doing attacks in, again, near misses are attacks. That's one of the things people don't, they don't grasp uh, very well. Uh, when a near miss is done on purpose, it is an attack on our aviation. So that's the, also the viewpoint that these congressional subcommittees have been, have been putting forward with this as well by doing these uh, national security reviews of these matters. And that's what's been going on. And this congressman has basically said, "This, these things are man-made, but they're not by us, and they're not by any particular nation." Well, that leaves who then? That leaves the deep state, Michael, as you just said. They are the ones who have apparently control of these things, and they're also desperate. They need. They are not getting the fear that they needed to get from people. They're just not. And what does that mean? Are they going to give up and go home? No, they're not. They're going to ratchet up the violence from these UAPs, uh, from these Tic Tacs, from these uh, anomalous vehicles. Uh, and this and this is going to happen right now as, uh, as Umwama is coming very soon. Well, one of my sources is uh, active uh, U.S. Army uh, JP, and he's talked about uh, various missions he's done into outer space. And one of the missions he described going to the moon, and going, uh, he's uh, finding this uh, ancient 
space art on the moon, a, a, a dormant piece of uh, extraterrestrial technology or ancient uh, technology that's been there for, for many thousands of years. And he described it as in a state of dormancy, but recently activating uh, because of these new fleets of extraterrestrials that arrived there. But he described these massive underground bases on the moon with all of these technologies, uh, something uh, that uh, I, I think uh, kind of fits into what you have described in your book about about these moon bases that uh, have been uh, laying dormant for eons and now uh, are going to be activated and there's going to be some major consequences for our planet. So you want to kind of walk us through what you wrote about in the yeah. uh, extra dimensionals about these ancient moon bases and wh where did you get that information? I got um, this, oh, the, the prophecies that I put in the extra dimensionals was basically just distilled information from all the many years of investigation that have gone on in this area for so long. And, and it really wasn't, it really didn't crystallize in my mind until I started listening to these uh, long after the prophecies were made in the uh, extra dimensionals. I started listening to these uh, secret space program witnesses who apparently I mean, they have seen this prophecy come true. Uh, moon bases, which have lain dormant for eons. I mean, we know the moon bases are there. We can see them uh, through the work of uh, Jose Escamilla and many others, uh, great documentarians that have shown us this stuff, the stuff that NASA would never show us, of course, that NASA actually works against showing us all the time. And um, the prophecy was basically moon bases, which have been laying dormant for eons, will be energized, brought to life, and opening, and, and will be opening up all those underground bases on the dark side of the moon that NASA has worked so furiously for the last 50 years to cover up, coming to life and sending numerous machines, vehicles, and biological creatures to Earth as well, uh, and this will be a this will create a furor against these agencies that were supposed to monitor space for such things, and it's a, it's a strange thing. I've I've heard from these, um, and now this is being fulfilled right now uh, because I have heard. Oh, and a, a great great movie that illustrates this. Uh, this has been illustrated in movies for many years, but a great movie that illustrates this as well is this movie Moonfall. That's it, Moonfall. Uh, it gives a great illustration of exactly what I just talked about. But it's the uh, secret space program witnesses that actually have been giving testimony that this is happening right now. Um, one, of the, one of the strange things is that, that I have heard from them, uh, especially recently, is that, that they keep seeing and dealing with these machines that deal with them, but they never see the actual alien visitors and, and maybe i'm just i mean you know much more about this area than i do but um they they only see and deal with the machines the, what i would say i would say is the ai that actually is operating on the moon all the time it's constantly and i believe they operate the uh the ufos the ships the things that move around up there um and for because for some reason i don't see biological um alien biological life up there as well you know but that's been that's been my experience in seeing the fulfillment of this particular prophecy that's going on right now so that's uh, quite remarkable that uh, you you uh, in, put that into your book the extra dimensionals uh, that kind of scenario and I, and I can't remember when you published the extra uh, dimensionals but uh, it comes out in this uh, movie Moonfall that I think came out uh, last year, 2022. Right. Moonfall comes out right. with the, the this scenario that you had uh, predicted um, decades before. So, or a dec oh, I can't remember you know, how many years ago you you wrote the extra dimensionals, but uh, certainly it shows your accuracy as a as a good analyst and predictor of, of events. And, and maybe, I guess, being an FBI, former FBI agent investigating, you must have good intuition, solid investigative skills. So all those things come together. But, yeah, it looks like uh, 
you know, you you did kind of like come up with a scenario that that looks yeah. like it could well happen now with the yeah. with the way in which uh, you know the deep state is kind of like ready to roll out its final cards. Yeah, and to answer your question further about where specifically what investigation did this uh, this particular prophecy come from. Uh, I can tell you one of the ways uh, in which uh, in which we find out what's really going on in the investigative world is through what's called like a reverse investigation. What you do is you look at what criminal actors are the most active in this area and what is it that they're the most anxious to cover up? What is it that they're the most? So in this particular area, you just have to look at what, NASA is doing what NASA is doing. And, you know, I know you're a scientist, so you may feel differently about this. But for me, NASA has always stood for um, never a straight answer. But now it also stands for uh, not a space agency, because that's not what they do. They do full time, full time, complete deception, according to the whistleblowers that I've heard from NASA. Uh, that's all they do is just pure deception. And then you just look at what is it that they've been the most anxious to cover up in the last, you know, 40 years? Well, of course, one of the things is, of course, the moon landing, that um, that, that actually occurred and that, all of that. But another thing is they've been covering up the most and then most consistently is the moon bases, the moon bases, <laughs> the structures that we can clearly see on the dark side of the moon. Um, they've covered up, you know, the explanations for why there is always a consistent dark side of the moon. They don't even want us looking on that side. Uh, and then it's like, well, why are they so, why are they so furiously consistent on covering up the moon bases uh, and uh, covering up the structures uh, and all of these things? And well, the answer is, it's because something's happening with these moon bases. Uh, they're going, to, and the reason is, it has to be because they are going to be coming to life. They are going to be producing um, not biological life, but perhaps mechanical life of some kind. Consciousness, mechan that's AI. And um, that's, so that's what you basically you do. You do, uh, you just look at the, uh, the actors that are in a particular area and look at what is it that they work the most consistently on covering up. And then that's where you're going to find out the real activity of what's going to be happening very soon. And that's how you come. That's how you get to that sort of thing as well. Well, the AI uh, element in all of this is is fascinating. I mean, uh, you know, when uh, you, you had Serge Manast writing his book, uh, Project Blue Beam, back in the 1990s, uh, AI was really in its infancy. Uh, but now AI has developed quite a lot. And certainly in the covert programs, I mean, we, we could have uh, synthetic life forms with uh, general artificial intelligence that would, would you know, comparable to, to humans. So that's kind of frightening where that where that could end up. So with with these AIs, um, as um, that are that are there on the moon uh, that could be part of this kind of like uh, staged event that the deep state is is planning. I mean, uh, you know, how how far do you think that's going to go? I mean, is is the AI threat a, a serious one, or is this again just another th threat card that's being played by the deep state to frighten us, lower our consciousness, so that they can manipulate and control us more? Yeah, it's all of those things. Uh, and also they're going to be uh, using AI as well um, when they do when they do this final last uh, great um, psychological operation of a false alien invasion against uh, against uh, the entire earth. And yeah, they're, they'll be using the AI for other aspects of that as well. And uh, that's why we need to really look to the moon and look to where where it is that they're using it, how they use it, so that we can predict how it's going to be used against us eventually. And that's that's one of the things that we really need to focus on as well and find out how this is going to be done. 
before they uh, they do uh, what we see happening in that picture right there uh, with the AI that's uh, observing its good work that it accomplished right there. Yeah, I mean, it's quite scary. Of course, we have the Terminator movies, um, you know, that uh, have been around for 20 years. I mean, Hollywood's been putting out this this kind of soft disclosure stuff or uh, predictive programming for decades. So, you know, people are, are, are ready for something to be played by the deep state. And, um, you know, again, I, I think it's important to emphasize that, um, you know, there, there are some that say, well, you know, will the Galactic Federation allow this and intervene or will the White Hats allow this? And, and I think, um, you know, we have to ask ourselves, what can humans kind of like swallow? You know, I mean, how... Uh, I mean, if you look at, if you look, I, I'm amazed. I'm truly amazed. Uh, living in the United States for 27 years now, I, you know, the, the United States that I arrived in appeared to be much more sophisticated, much more kind of like aware. People seem to be much more aware. Whereas now, people are, are programmed. They're programmed to follow whatever, whatever script the major major media pushes out there. And if you deviate from the script, you know, you're you're uh, labeled a, 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 a promoter of uh, misinformation or hate speech or you're censored or deplatformed. It's just amazing to see the transition. But, you know, the result of all of that is that the deep state can, can fool a majority of people, smart people, to believe in ridiculous things. And, and it's amazing to, to have watched this transition. So, you know, you look at the possibility, could the deep state uh, fool the American public or the or the planetary population by using these uh, Project Blue Beam type technologies with uh, their reverse engineered spacecraft, with these, uh, these dirigibles, huge dirigibles that could kind of like in combination with uh, blue beam technologies or holographic technologies appear to be massive motherships just floating over cities. And they could do that and, and fool the population and positive extraterrestrials are kind of like watching all of this and thinking, my God, you know, when are they going to wake up? This is all just a big show. <laughs> and, and, of course, those of us who are speaking the truth, you know, we're being deplatformed, we're being yeah. kind of like censored, we're being labelled disinformationists, you know, yeah. alien huggers or whatever whatever the disinfo is. So, yeah, I mean, uh, could it get as bad as what you described? Um, yeah, certainly uh, that's a very uh, serious possibility we need to be prepared for. And I think you're doing that. Absolutely. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, it's all we can do at this point is just try to, Try to save lives at this point. Just try to, because when this does come in full effect, when the uh, fake alien invasion does happen all at once, I mean, it's going to be insane. It's going to be crazy. And people are going to panic. They are going to panic. And um, the uh, deep state has already shown how much power they have over people's minds because of what has happened just in the last, in the last year or so. Um, where they actually took all of their assets in the media and in the popular culture, uh, the uh, and all of their all of their people to actually just go on a 180 spin, a 180 spin in ufology, and in well with UAPs, and have actually said for the first time in human history, now all of the media is going to say, uh, yeah, you um, UFOs could be real. Uh, they could be real. Alien visitors could be real, as long as they're UAPs. As long as they're UAPs. None of this, none of this UFO stuff from from a long time ago. Now it's all UAPs. And if we're dealing with UAPs, this stuff could actually. And then they have their agents um, look up at the sky and say, "This could be evidence that we are possibly not alone in the universe." And that's what they say. Uh, and they do it very pensively and very seriously. And it's an old, it's an old CIA uh, mind control phrase that actually says, yeah, now aliens are real because we say so it's real. Uh, but, uh, but we're not saying explicitly that the aliens are real. Uh, we're just kind of suggesting it to you. So, yeah, that's the, the fact that they have been able to do this 180 spin 
in all of popular culture is it should alert those of us who are investigators to say, why now? Why is this? Why do we suddenly see Fox News and Tucker Carlton uh, uh, suddenly saying to people, yeah, it looks like UFOs aren't real after all. Go figure. And having these uh, these agents who used to be in ufology uh, who now are are now working with the UAP psychological operation uh, and having them come forward and say, yeah, yeah, this stuff is real. This stuff is real. And uh, now we need to pay deference to it uh, and st- so that we will be distracted from real ufology, from reality, uh, which is what you work on, Michael. You work on real disclosure and uh, real the real disclosure process that's happening uh, happening other places, in other places, behind the scenes. And uh, it's getting increasingly difficult to, for, I would imagine, for you to work on that while this entire UAP psychological operation is going on as well. It has to make it much harder. Well, one of the elements uh, that you describe in the extra dimensionals is the activation of these uh, behemoth-like uh, life forms and and then then becoming active and running rampant. I mean, if you had uh, told me that a few years ago, I would have laughed and said, "No way is that going to happen." But now I I have to kind of step back and say, "Yeah, you know, they they could do that. You know, basically unleash Godzilla." Mm-hmm. I mean, there you go. I mean, mm-hmm. that Godzilla. Mm-hmm. That the part of the the Japanese movie yes. scene, or or something yes. like from the Book of Revelations, could be unleashed yeah. on humanity yes. as part of this psyop. So tell us about it. Yeah, and I did. Um, I did later look at that prophecy, and I actually said, and I actually said, I think I think I got this from the Book of Revelations of the Bible, because um, anybody, and um, I, I've got to I've got to read that more carefully. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, in the book of Revelations, it actually does predict that uh, there will be these giant locust creatures as large as horses that also have tails like scorpions that will be uh, coming up from the earth, will be coming out of the earth, and will be attacking humans, will be attacking humans, and will be destroying humans to such an extent that they human beings will seek death. They will want to die from these attacks, uh, and they will be unable to die for some reason. Uh, it's it's crazy stuff, but I definitely see that uh, see that very similar to Godzilla coming up from the earth, uh, and I see that happening very soon as well. It's crazy stuff. Yeah, amazing. So, you know, do you think this is going to happen? I mean, when you say fairly soon, I mean, are we talking the next few months? I mean, how far away? are we from all of these kinds of events that that you've been predicting for years now actually manifesting? Because it does seem like something pretty big and dark and sinister is about to be unleashed, that we're going to go from this, you know, we're going to move into something really dangerous very, very soon. So uh, how long do you think we have? I, I would counter with another quick question, which is, well, how soon will Omwama be here, you know, on this last go round? And the probes and the Omamwa probes that are coming. How soon? I mean, I, I don't I don't know, but I think it's gonna be fairly soon. And uh I think that could be the kickoff. That could be the kickoff when Omwama rec- arrives and the probes that it will be bringing with it. Uh and you know, that's just one example of a timeline that I think is pretty short. It's pretty short, and it's gonna be happening very very soon so i I think it could be months it could be just a matter of very short months that we're facing here right now well you know i just want to remind the the viewers that um a year ago if if you had uh if you were told that uh, very soon the major media is going to start talking about motherships releasing probes you would have thought that would have been ridiculous but now (laughs) we have it so um uh, these other kind of like uh, predictions uh, that john has made um are, are very important to to look at and prepare yourself for so yeah so john how do people prepare for this kind of uh these kinds of um false flag events these kinds of sinister uh, developments so you know, what's the best way to prepare and deal with that uh the best way to prepare is to go and listen to your presentation 
that is coming up, I believe, um, like tomorrow, the day after you're doing your latest seminar, uh, I think people need to go listen to that. They need to get ready. They need to learn, be educated. They need to read the extra dimensionals. They need to read the truth about alien visitors and UFOs and educate themselves as a method of self-defense. It's just a method of self-defense because these, these forces are going to be attacking us with deception on scales that have never been seen before. Deception on levels like cosmic levels, like Jesus Christ in the sky levels of deception. You know, uh, uh, half a million Tic Tacs in the sky level of deception. Uh, that's what we're going to be coming up against. And so we need to educate ourselves right now. People, um, people need to read the extra dimensionals. They need to uh, go and watch Michael Sala. Uh, he's, doing, he's doing AMA in his seminar. Uh, you can go and ask him anything. Uh, and these are the questions you need to ask Michael Sala as well. So this is what people need to do, Michael, and they need to do it fast because time is running out. Time is running out, and it's running out fast. So, so where do people go, John, if they want to get in contact with you, find out, uh, you know, what books you've written, and if they want to get yeah. a copy of the Extra Dimensionals? Yeah, they just need to go to johntamabooks.com. Uh, I have here um, my uh, my uh, company here uh, left me some info. They uh, uh, can buy any of my books. Uh, using FBI using code FBI20 FBI20 for 20% off on the extra dimensionals or any book uh, at johntamabooks.com and also I um, I sell uh, spiritual products holotech products uh, for people for their again self protection for their protection and for their assistance in this uh, day and age that we are in uh, holotech products uh, using code sala50 Sala 50, uh, S A L S A L L A 50, uh, for 50% discount on all Holotech products. Very important. Uh, so people should go there, get that, and keep educating yourself. Keep educating yourself. Keep asking questions and uh, do that here with Michael also. Um, and when he's giving his seminar uh, in, a couple of, in a couple of days, I think it is. That's, that's what people have to do. Michael, very important. And got to do it now. Well, I want to thank you, John, for coming back on Exopolitics today. And uh, certainly uh, we will uh, continue our conversation when uh, we see these events start to play out. And we'll, we'll have you back and, 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 and cover in more detail exactly what it is that Deep State is doing. So thank you again, John, and, and good luck with your research and writing and future events. Thank you so much, Michael. Great stuff. Good stuff. Thank you again to you and your audience. Good people. Thank you. You have been listening to Exopolitics Today with Dr. Michael Sala. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Join or start a conversation in the comments. Take the time to explore the vast library of best-selling books, webinars, and podcasts by Dr. Sala. Visit exopoliticstoday.com. 